Our film is about filming events that occur in the micro world. But we cannot use the standard camera to film the micro world. Objects there are too small and they also move too fast. Objects we want to film are molecules and atoms. They are just a tenth of a nanometer across. The deeper we go into micro world, the smaller the objects are and the faster they move. The electron motion is clocked in attoseconds. 10 attoseconds is so much shorter than the blink of our eye, and the blink of our eye is shorter than the age of the dinosaurs. How do we image things that are so small? One way is to use waves. How waves scattered from objects tell us about the object shape and size. Think of sea waves as they scatter from big rocks. But then these waves would hardly notice small pebbles. The important thing here is wavelength, the distance between the two crests of the wave. If the object is much smaller than the wavelength, the wave will not see it. To see electrons, atoms and molecules we need very short wavelength, tenth of nanometer or less. But where can we get such a wave? Fortunately, we can use particles of the micro world themselves. Thanks to Mr. Louis de Broglie we know that electrons are not only particles, they are also waves. Even better. The faster the electron moves, the shorter is its wavelength. Now we have a wave, which is both fast enough and short enough to image the micro world. We ask the inhabitants of the micro world to take their own pictures and send us the movie. Let's zoom into the molecule. There are many electrons and they sit in different orbitals. We take one of them out. To do this, we will use intense light. Now things start to happen. The electrons inside the molecule are no longer in equilibrium because one of them is gone. The empty space is called a hole. Think of an empty chair that the electron has left behind. Other electrons can try to take it, leaving one of their own chairs empty. How do electrons rearrange themselves? How do they interact? This is what we want to film. Let's now look at the electron which we have pulled out. At the beginning it was confined inside the molecule. Once it leaves the molecule it starts to spread, growing bigger in size. At the same time the intense laser light will now accelerate it to a high speed, so that the electron's de Broglie wavelength becomes short. This is exactly what we need. Then, as the oscillating electric field in the light wave changes its direction, it will bring this de Broglie wave back to the molecule and take its image. One way to take this image is for the electron to recombine with the hole left in the molecule. As the electron wave is sucked in by the hole, all the electron energy is converted into light. This light carries with it the image of the hole. And now all we have to do is to capture this light, measure it as best as we can and decode the image. But decoding images hidden in the light is not easy task. This is where mathematics rules. And this is where the real fun begins. Now it is time to become formal. Yeah. I want to see my movie. Wait a second, not so fast. Let me first show you the laser field. Here it is, it oscillates. And when it reaches the maximum, it can pull electron out. And when the electron is pulled out, it oscillates in the laser wave and it can come back, recombine with it and emit a burst of light. It can come back twice per laser cycle. Two bursts of light are emitted during one laser cycle. Now, 
If the light bursts are emitted twice per laser cycle, how would it, the spectrum of this light look like? Aha. Uh -huh. So now you want me to integrate, do the Fourier transform in my head. Right. Easy. It will look like a sequence of harmonic lines. Right. That is exactly how typical harmonic spectrum look like. What you see are harmonic lines. They correspond to different frequencies. They are just like musical notes. And different notes and different frequencies are played at different time, all in perfect sequence. It actually all depends on the energy of the electron returning to the parent ion and recombining and emitting light. The energy which electron has when it returns back is all converted into light. And this energy also depends on the moment when electron comes back. That is why all notes are played at different times. Each harmonic line is like a frame and the harmonic spectrum is like a movie. But what I really want to know is how you convert these lines into images. How do you dig out the motion of electrons and holes from the sequence of light? Now you will get your formulas. The light that we measure is a Fourier transform of a dipole which is induced in the molecule by the laser field. And if we measure the harmonic light, then we can dig out this dipole and this dipole contains all information about the charge flow in the molecule that we are after. Yeah, I buy it. It contains all information, but I still want to know how is the motion of this electron and the hole is encoded in the dipole. Theoretically, the dipole is given by a product of two vectors and a matrix. The rightmost term in this expression is the ionization vector. Indeed, we can remove electron from any orbital, from different orbitals, and for each orbital we have an ionization amplitude. Next is the propagation matrix. It takes care of the propagation of both electron and a hole. While electron travels in the continuum, the hole may move between the orbitals, and all possible pathways that describe this dynamics are contained in the propagation matrix. And finally, we have the recombination vector. And this recombination vector contains the amplitudes for electron hole recombination for each individual orbital. And now we have it, the dipole. And this, my friends, is the formalism we use to decode electron hole dynamics in molecules. And now you are going to see the movie that we decoded from harmonic spectra. This movie shows whole dynamics in a chiral molecule, the propylene oxide.